Hey everybody, Buddy Cosplay here. I'm outside in my car. It is 34 degrees outside today here in Kentucky. It was just 70 like three days ago, which is crazy. But it really marks a change in the weather. And since I was thinking a lot about change, I figured let's do some change to the channel. And the change that I've got in mind isn't gonna change too much because we're still gonna have our tutorials and builds, but we're gonna add something uh, new to the channel, which is gonna be interviews. And this is going to be our very first interview, and it's with uh, Night Mage. You may know him, you may not, but by the time you're done with this interview, you will know him a whole lot better, and you'll probably like him because he's a really cool cat. Because people still say cool cat, right? It, no? Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so sit back, relax, and uh, enjoy this, this change and the new interview segments we're going to start doing here on the channel. Enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first interview for cccosplay.com. I am your host, Buddy Cosplay, and I figured if you're going to do an interview, why not start off with a bang? So today I'm joined by someone who is pretty well known throughout the cosplay space, Mr. Michael Wilson, the one, the only, Night Mage. Welcome to the show, Mike. How are you doing? Good, good, man. Thanks for having me for the very first interview. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to, to have you. I, I told you in one of my... Uh, emails that for the longest time my screensaver on my phone was your spawn cosplay which is uh, epic uh, to say the least <laughs> that means a lot that means thank you and i also saw you at the local convention they had over in cincinnati you were there with griffin cosplay maybe mm -hmm. and you guys were doing a little panel i snuck up there on uh, i think it was saturday while my okay. daughter and nephew were running around geeking it up i was in there and got to watch you guys so that was kind of nice well, thank you for coming to the panel. No problem. No problem. Uh, so I've got some questions here, and we're going to keep it nice and loose and uh, just start with uh, letting us know a little bit about you. Tell us uh, who you are as a person and what you do in the cosplay space. Uh, well, um, name Michael Wilson, a.k.a. Night Mage. Um, my day job is in law enforcement, so pretty much you know, cosplaying is my passion. It's what I love to do. Um, I started back in, well, it really started in 2011 for Halloween. Um, I've always just loved Halloween and dressing up. So that year, I wanted to go as uh, John Stewart, Green Lantern. And that's a costume you can't really find in stores. You can always find Hal Jordan, but you can't find the John Stewart version. So I figured, okay, I'm going to have to make it. And never made anything in my life, not crafty whatsoever. So my girlfriend helped me sew it together. It was, you know, it was an Under Armour shirt and top and uh, shirt and bottom and stuff and got the green fabric put it all together looked really awesome and went out to the bars drinking had fun on halloween and then um about a week later i got asked to do a charity event locally here in youngstown ohio and um it was a it was a relay for life and the theme was superheroes had a super outfit sure i'll do it went ahead and did it it was a blast i had a lot of fun started getting asked to do more events is I had this Green Lantern outfit. So I figured, okay, if I'm going to do this, I kind of need to have a little bit more in the closet. So I bought a Spider-Man outfit, and I ended up making a Captain America and a Batman, and then it just snowballed from there. So in 2012, I was just doing charity events. That's all I was doing, hospital visits, uh, Relay for Life's, um, fundraisers, what you name it, I was doing it. And then uh, I actually never have been to a convention before. I always heard about them, always kind of wanted to go, just never had time. So I set out for my first convention, which was the Cincinnati Comic Expo in 2012, and I went as Batman. I only went for one day, and as soon as I like stepped on the floor, I was just blown away. I was like, these are my people. This is my world. Where, you know, I've been missing this. This is crazy. So, yeah, ever since then, it's just been full steam ahead on – the, the conventions, the charity aspect of it, making costumes. It's just been crazy. Great. And and since you're in law enforcement, I imagine you catch a little bit of grief. You get do you oh, embrace yeah. your inner nerd and just be proud of it and say, Well, heck with everybody else. Cops are dicks. First off. <laughs> so it's just naturally that's just the way we are. But um yeah, when I first started, I got a lot of flack. You know, I, I got ribbed on all the time, whether, you know, something about wearing tights or, I don't know, 
think you're a superhero, whatever, you, you name it, I was I was ridiculed for it. So over time, once people start seeing the pictures from the conventions and how much fun I was having and what I was doing and people are meeting and stuff like that, slowly people's tunes started to change. And they started asking me about how how did the weekend go? What'd you do? Got any cool stories? And then it moved on to, hey, uh, my kid's having a little get-together this weekend. Do you think uh, you can come by dressed as somebody? And then it went to, hey, I'm thinking about doing this for Halloween. Do you think you can help me with this costume? And so slowly, things really started to turn around. I mean, I still get picked on a little bit for it, but it's, it's starting to become a really accepting thing. I think... Partly has a lot to do with like the uh, a lot of superhero movies that have been coming out and stuff like that. It's getting a lot more traction to new fans, which is awesome. So, yeah. I guess it doesn't hurt the fact that you're probably six foot tall and two hundred and eighty pounds. I have no idea, but I've seen you. You're, you're built like a shit brick house. Or but I'm a teddy house. bear. Just don't tell nobody <laughs> that I'm a teddy bear. Really inside. <laughs> I'd like to think we all are, but I'm I'm five nine and you know, <laughs> so I can't say much. So how did you get the name Night Mage? And I do also have to point out that I did see Night Night Mage versus Zombies or something on the internet. A oh video. God, yeah. Was that your okay. inception of your character? Well, all right. So Night Mage, where that came from? Uh, do you remember the show Who Wants to Be a Superhero, hosted by Stanley? I love that. It only had like one season, didn't it? Uh, two seasons. Two. I have to look. So um, I found out about it, and I saw season one. I was like, "Oh my god, this is awesome! Love it!" And uh, so I said, "All right, I'm going to audition for season two. So I came up with the character Night Mage, and Night Mage is basically, to cut it short, is a cross between Doctor Strange and a Jedi Knight. So I had this whole backstory, the name, character design, blah blah. I went into audition, and um, I went to it was uh, in Washington. I went and auditioned, and then I got a call back to go to Florida. So did that, and um, I actually got to be an alternate for the show. So I got to pick, be, I got picked to be an alternate for a season two, which I didn't make the show, but it was still cool to be thought of. And then um, I never did anything with the character. So years went by, didn't do anything, and then when I actually, when I started getting into cosplaying. I thought about, okay, well, let me just start doing these little YouTube web series on the character, just just for fun. Started doing it, and then once the cosplaying started picking up, I just kind of used that name as like a fan page type name, and it just went off from there. Which you have a per- pretty popular uh, fan page, I noticed. I'm part of it, but, but I thought it was like 17,000... Like. The way it kind of worked out was, was people started following my personal page first. And so my personal page got bigger than the fan page. So that's why I keep both of them. And I, I post the exact same content. Like everything I post is always public, whether it's on one page, on the Michael Wilson page or Night Mage page. It's all public. So you can follow either one and get the same exact content. It's just some people found one page. Some people found the other page, so I just kept it that way. <laughs> Do you ever get any uh, stalkery type people? <coughs> I'm sure that's more of an issue for the ladies in in the it cosplay is. world because um, they, you know, they're prettier. <laughs> hey, what you mean pretty? Well? It, it's actually nice to see a man that gets up there and and it represents other men in cosplay <laughs> because most everything you see on social media is women with their breasts pressed up and hanging out, and, it's, and I, it really takes away from I, the craft. I will. Well, I love it though. We'll get, all right, we'll get on that because I, I I actually have something to say about that. Um, but as far as stalkerish stuff, no, no, nah, nah, I I Until wouldn't say now. stalkerish to a fault. Not stalk, yeah, not stalkerish to a fault. I I have um, some very avid followers and stuff like that, but they mean well, and and it's really appreciative, you know. And I love it, and so yeah, it's nothing nothing bad. Janet, right? <laughs> it's always Janet. <coughs> you said it. You, I didn't Janet. say that. We're watching you, Janet. I I didn't say that, Janet. <laughs> so give me your uh, your input on the females versus men in cosplay. 
Oh, all right. Well, sex sells. It does. I mean, just that's the truth. That's just the way it is. It's the way it's always going to be. Sex sells. Is there anything wrong with that? No. Um, I always kind of look at it as in what you eat is not going to make me shit. So I really don't care what another person is doing in the cosplay community. If they're doing it for money, if they're doing it for publicity, if they're, you know, showing their, their chest and ass just for fame, whatever. Cool. I mean, if that's what gets you off, that's what makes you happy by all means. If you love like it, I love it. But fine. Do it because it's not going to affect me. I'm still going to be doing the exact same things I want to do. The people that follow me, if they love what I do, they're going to love what I do. And so, just go ahead and do it. And also, there's people out there, those girls that do do that. They have a fan base. And there's people out there that enjoy seeing what they're doing for one reason or another. So, who am I to say that they're wrong for giving someone else some enjoyment in their life. I agree with you. Uh, but I kind of kind of got to ask, just, just since I got you on the line here, do you think it detracts any or takes away from the craft itself? Because for me, cosplay is about the creative process. I love taking a piece of foam, cutting it, sanding it, shaping it, painting it, and things like that. It's At almost no therapeutic, point, isn't it? Oh, my wife hates it because <laughs> she won't geek out with me. And she's like, you're always in the basement. But yeah. I love it. And there's never, there'll never be a point where it will be nice that my ass is hanging out. That will never be nice and part of my cosplay. And uh, it kind of feels like a slight hindrance. But it's, I don't have a problem with anybody else doing it. But maybe just slightly I'm jealous that I can't. <laughs> I think... Um... <clears throat> And that's something I guess maybe ties into what I tell people who are starting off and people are starting off and I, I tell them, do not, when you're researching your character and your character design and what costume you want to do and version, look at drawings, look at art, the art of it, look at toys, do not look at other cosplayers' costumes because subconsciously you're going to want to try and outdo that costume and that's not what it's about it's about outdoing yourself and doing the best you can and i think that that's somewhat a problem is like the negative competition in this community and maybe it has something to do with a little bit like what you're saying is a little jealousy in the fact that like well i can't i don't have the body to do that so i'm a little bit jealous that you know, someone else can do it it's i still shouldn't take away from your enjoyment. It should still t- should take away from your therapeutic sessions of crafting. It, 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 I don't think it does. I mean, I think you just have to, you just have to think about it as you're cosplaying for yourself. You're cosplaying for yourself as well as for the people that enjoy your cosplay. And just leave it at that. Don't worry about and think about what other people are doing. Gotcha. I it's not... That. Yeah, it's not taken away from the craft. I mean, I think with with cosplay becoming so mainstream now, um, you're able to. I mean, you're able to get a costume from China, almost, almost, almost as good as you know fabricating one yourself, and for probably just as much, if not less. And I think with that, it basically means that there's going to be a turning tide with the sexy cosplay. I mean, before that was kind of the attention thing. I mean, in order for guys to get ahead, you were going to have, you had to make like these huge elaborate things where now I think it's kind of leveling the playing field for everyone, for everyone's going to be kind of on the same level. Yeah, I got you. I'm glad you were talking about the therapeutic aspect of it and creating them yourself because I kind of wanted to move into the technical aspects and ask you some questions more about your process of creating cosplay and things. What is your main materials that you use? I'm assuming EVA foam, (laughs) but you make a lot. So, um, my main material I would say is, is foam. Um, a couple of different reasons. Uh, one it's cheap. I mean, I'm all about doing things on a budget, and so it's extremely cheap. It's extremely easy to use. 
Um, I mean, it, it seems, you know, you look at this, you know, Iron Man armor standing in front of you, and then you have, like, a sheet of foam, and to visualize, well, how the hell is this sheet of foam going to turn into that? It seems really intimidating. But once you get the inner workings of how foam works and how to cut it, how to mold it, how and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's like putting a puzzle together. It's, it's all about thinking outside the box. But uh, I would say my primary thing is is foam. Not, not to say I don't like other materials like thermoplastics and stuff like that, but... Again, I want to always try and err on the side of budgeting. So foam is always going to be my number one go-to. Okay, and what's your thoughts on uh, Peppercora and Warbla? Uh, Pep, um, here's the thing. All right, with Pep, for me personally, I'm not a patient person. I've tried it. I do like it. It's very precise. But you have to have patience. And that's something I lack. Um, so, uh, I do suggest, I always suggest PEP to people, excuse me, especially if they're just first starting out because it is like putting a puzzle together. So it is, it is rather simple as long as you have the patience to actually do it. So yeah, I do like it. Um, I do tell people to, when it comes to competitions, just know that in most, comp- not most, but some competitions, um, PEP is always going to be looked at down a little bit step down more than freehanding so even if you're even if it's completely flawless someone's stepping in and theirs is has a little bit flawed but they freehand it totally you you know you might get beaten out only because it's a little bit harder to do freehand than as pep so I always tell people that aspect of it. I mean, that's not a hundred percent case. I'm just saying that's that ha- does happen um, with thermoplastics like Warba. I love it. Again, I love it. <laughs> Excuse me. I love it for small details, and it's easy to work with. It's probably actually easier than foam, but the cost is what deters me most about it. Yeah, it's 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 expensive stuff. I have just. I've stayed away from it completely. I've been a foam fan from the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. I mean, pretty much anything you do with you can do with Warbler, you can do with foam. So yeah, it's it's just your preference. Yeah, the people at Harbor Freight get tired of seeing me. They're like, man, he must have some bad feet because he's always in here getting those floor mats. <laughs> Love Harbor Freight. And you mentioned competitions, so I just wanted to ask you that. Have you entered any of the competitions at any of the conventions and did you win any? I started off, so I told you my first convention was Cincinnati Comic Expo, and I, as like I said, I, I didn't know anything about conventions or anything like that, so I went to that con, and I entered as Batman, and uh, the judges were uh, Chris and Miracle Burns, which became good friends with them, but two fantastic people, fantastic cosplayers, and uh, so... I, I, I didn't win, but you know they talked with me, and I learned a lot from them. And uh, actually, I didn't have not entered another competition since then. It was never a driving force for me was to enter competitions. I I judge pretty much every comp, like every contest that I, I'm at a, at a convention at. I judge a lot, and I also do a lot of um, behind the scenes programming, uh, like organizing the contests and stuff like that. I, I, I like that. I like being involved in that process. I like being able to encourage other people from behind a table than for me to be judged and have to, quote unquote, try and prove something. Because I really don't have to prove anything to myself. I just want to encourage other people to do it. So that's why I always tell people to, to enter contests and enter it not, not for the idea of winning. Don't enter a contest with the idea of winning. Enter a contest with the idea of you put your time in this costume, whether you bought it, whether you pieced it together, whether you hand it, whatever whatever it is. You're wearing a costume. While you're on that stage for that 30 seconds to a minute, that's your time to shine. All eyes and cameras are on you. Own it. And don't Own trip. It. And don't trip. And don't fart. Uh, and you said you did win that? That one that you entered? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. Oh, you did not. But you're a judge, so everybody listening or watching, get to know this guy. 
and he might be rocks. judging you. <laughs> right. Hence, hence the reason we're talking over beer. Like, hey, we drank beer. You like my costume, right? Uh, with your first uh, few builds, uh, some of them um, sound like they were more fabric and things like that. But over the first five or so, uh, if you could know the things that you know now back then, is there anything you would have changed? What, what would have been different in your building process that could have helped uh -huh. you out? You know, I, all right, so to date, I have about 82 costumes, and I have not, I've only revisited maybe three or four and added small details or, or redid something, um, and those are costumes that I reuse a lot, um, whether for conventions or charity events or stuff like that, but um, I can honestly say I don't think I would change anything. I don't think... Knowing what I know now, I don't think I would have changed anything because it was perfect to me at that moment. And to go back and think to I would have changed something, I don't know. I, I can't. I can't even think that way. Fair enough. It's not, it's not in my makeup. Yeah, some of the stuff I've made has turned out horrible, but I love it anyway because it was my babies, you know. Exactly. I, I learned a lot. I learned about putting LEDs in places and how to run them off a battery and not blow the LED. It was a learning experience. It's ugly, but <laughs> I don't wear it to convince That's it. how you learn. That is how you learn. Uh, now, I, I went through some of your social media before we sat down, and I seen – a ton of costumes. You said you have 82 to date. I've seen the Shredder, God of War, Captain Planet, the Grinch, Spawn, Spawn with Wings, and uh, a ton more. So I just kind of am curious, which one is your favorite? If you could pick one out of your massive library of costly Ugh. costumes, which would be your it's, favorite? You already said it. It's like everyone's just my babies, man. Like, it's I can't. <laughs> it's hard to choose. You always, always have a favorite. Question. You have a favorite. Everyone has a favorite. You know what? I, I, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. That, And I, I think you'll agree with me. I think a lot of people can agree with me is that there are certain costumes that you wear that you embody a little bit more than others. So, for instance, and those are the ones I enjoy wearing the most. So they kind of get equal equal to favoritism. So like, like Dark Side. I love wearing Dark Side just because I... I feel like godlike. I feel powerful, you know. Snake eyes from GI Joe. I love wearing snake eyes because I feel like a ninja. I feel stealthy and noble and honorable. You know, um, Lobo and like Kratos and Spawn. I feel like a, just a straight up badass in it. So, and there's there's other costumes that I have that I wear, and I just I just like the costume. I don't feel anything in it. I just like the costume. Piccolo or Icon or or uh, Moon Knight. So. There's costumes that I, I love wearing, and those are my favorites. Um, so I, I can't just pick one, but I will say the one I'm most proud of is probably Predator. <coughs> um, I'm proud of that one because – of mainly because of the cost it took me to make, to make it. Um, most uh, Predator cosplayers, you'll see they'll spend – or you can spend – hundreds of thousands of dollars on their predator cosplays and they look amazing they are incredible 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 me i'm el cheapo if i can't make it or buy it for 250 or under it's not happening so i really wanted to do predator and i was looking and fit, trying to figure out how am i going to do this and keep it <coughs> excuse me keep it under 250 so once i started doing it a lot of EVA foam, um, fabric, a lot of airbrushing. Ended up being only $125. And um, I was really happy with it. I was proud of it. And then uh, there's a YouTube show called Man in Arms. And what yeah. they do is they, they fabricate um, – they forge like real steel into weapons and stuff. But they, they replicate weapons from video games, movies, comics, you name it. And so they actually contacted me. And they wanted my predator to be their predator for the – they were making the wrist blade. So to me, I'm like out of all the predator cosplayers and costumes that they've seen and stuff, they picked mine. That was 
that was a huge validation for me saying, wow, I guess I, I did a pretty okay job, you know? So that's, that's the one I was you know, the most nervous about, but it ended up being the one I'm most proud of. That's uh that's one I wanted to tackle. I just haven't, I started with the helmet and after three attempts, I said, eh, we'll move on to something else. <laughs> Are you the type of guy that like, once you put it down, like you'll never revisit it or you just got to take know. a break? I've, I've got this World of Warcraft Sentry armor that I'm building. I don't know why. It's not epic. No one will be like, oh, I know that's from World of Warcraft. But I was a Warcraft junkie for five years, yeah. day in and day out. I have a picture of me holding my newborn baby while I'm down in a dungeon trying to get some loot. And <laughs> uh, it just holds a special place for me. So I, I'm going to build this thing. And it's looking, it's looking pretty cool already. Finish it. But I, I get this far, and then I start building the the right hand of doom from Hellboy, <laughs> and then I start on something else, and I come back to this, and then I do a leg, and it's all over the place. Yep. <clears throat> but just for everybody uh, watching, I did the math. You said you try to keep it under two fifty, but just imagine if you spent two fifty <clears throat> for every costume, and you have eighty two costumes. That's twenty thousand dollars, twenty thousand five hundred dollars in costume cost. Wow, you really do enjoy cosplay. <laughs> That's what we do. I, you know what? I kind of justify it like this, and this, this is I don't know. It it makes absolutely no freaking sense whatsoever, though. But I try. So twenty thousand in costume cost, even though it's a lot lower because some costumes were under a hundred dollars and blah blah. But in the time that I've been doing this, I've raised over a hundred thousand. In various charities. So I kind of say that's actually a pretty good investment. It is, absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks. And I, we're going to talk about uh, the charities and things like that in just a second. But before we do, I wanted to ask you two more questions and then I, I want to talk about the charity stuff. Um, but for people that are new to cosplay, uh, just thinking about starting out their first costume or armor piece or prop and they're just intimidated or they're just not sure where to start. Can you give a tip or some insight for the newbie that's wanting to get started and just don't know where to begin? Um, yeah, I, I know a lot of people like the, I get a lot of messages and they're like, Hey, um, you know, can you help me with this costume? It's my first time, you know, working with it. I already went out and bought some foam. I'm ready to go. I'm like, all right, yeah, sure. You know, what do you want to make? Oh, I want to make this giant Gundam. Like, this is your first time, you know, making thing, anything, right? You're like, yeah, yeah. And uh, so it seems to be a thing that people, they want to jump right in and do something huge and big. And realistically, you can do that. You're probably going to burn yourself out and you're going to end up hating this hobby. I always tell people, start small. Start making small stuff. Um, I always tell people, making like uh, bracers or Batman gauntlets or something like that. Just something small to get your knowledge of how foam works. Start off small. Um, also, use the tools of the internet. Uh, like the Replica Prop Forum. Uh, other cosplayers, don't be afraid to message people and ask for advice, ask for tips, ask for help, um, ask for guidance. YouTube. YouTube, you can get a degree on YouTube on how much information and tutorials are. If, there's so many darn tutorials on YouTube. Um, so, yeah, use the Internet. Use your friends. Use other cosplayers. Uh, don't be afraid to ask. And uh, just if you do have that drive and you do want to start off big, just remember that you're starting starting off big. Don't go into it thinking this, this is going to be a simple piece of cake and then if you get frustrated, throw it away. No, go into it knowing that this is going to be a task. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. You're going to cry. You're going to bleed. You're going to cut yourself. You're going to burn yourself with hot glue. But in the end, it's going to be all worth it. So just don't give up on it. Good advice. Good advice. Uh, I'd like to revisit uh, the conventions for one more question. And that is also aimed at the new person that's looking to uh, get into cosplaying. Because conventions can be overwhelming. I've been to a few. And even the last one I went to in costume, I felt like a total tool as I'm walking into the place out in public and people are driving by looking. Do you have any 
tips or advice for the new cosplayer that's going to their first or second convention to make them a little more comfortable? Yeah. Um, like when I first went, you know, I had been doing, I had been doing costuming outside of conventions for, for a year, but going to a convention, is a totally different thought process and you're nervous and you don't know what to expect. What I tell people is honestly, conventions are like family reunions. You are among family. Like you walk in and, and, you're with your people, so don't worry. Like you are, you're accepted automatically. Um, however, conventions can be very tiring. As you said working work at a convention or just going in costume for eight hours. After that weekend is done, you're spent. Like you need a good day or two to recover from it. Um, so make sure you plan accordingly with your costume. Um, as far as that goes. Um, make sure your your shoes are comfortable. Whatever costume it is you're going to be wearing, make sure you have comfortable boots, comfortable shoes. Make sure you're just comfortable, whether you're a woman in a corset or you're a guy in all foam armor. Just make sure you're going to be comfortable. Um, stay hydrated. Um, always keep an emergency kit with you. So whatever costume it is that you have, make sure you have an emergency kit that's going to be fitting for that costume. If it's a, all, you know... Um, uh, sewn together costume. Make sure you have needle or thread with you in case it rips. If it's uh, something fabricated out of foam or something like that, make sure you have a mini hot glue gun with you. Um, some some super glue. Whatever it is, you want to make sure you have something for that costume. Is more than likely it's going to something's going to happen to it. However, also make sure you wear your costume before the convention, so you know if something breaks or you had need to fix anything. The last thing you want to do is go to a convention. And as soon as you step foot on the floor, the first time in that costume, something breaks and you're, not, you're in panic. It means you don't know what to do. A um, <clears throat> little personal stuff is, guys, if you're going to wear spandex, if you're going to wear anything spandex, Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, you name it, if you're in spandex, wear a dance belt. If you don't know what a dance belt is, it is <laughs> basically it's a jock strap. It's going to make you look like a Ken doll, nice and smooth down there. So if you can't find a dance belt, you can uh, get them on Amazon. If you need it like in a tight pinch, you can go to Walmart and get a, a jock strap with a cup. You don't have to wear the cup, but wear the jock strap with a pair of boxer briefs or something or a pair of briefs. But you need something down there covering your stuff. I usually put a couple tube socks down in there, down my leg. Well, there's, there's, there's conventions for that. There's, <laughs> I've never been to them, but me neither. <laughs> uh, if I could add something uh, that I've noticed, uh, I don't know if it's feasible for everybody, especially if you're going to a local convention. But I've noticed that people that stay in the hotel that's connected to the convention centers, if there is one, have a slight advantage because the last one I went to was local. I drove there in spandex. With all my costume in the back, I get there, I'm in a parking garage, I'm throwing pieces on, people are walking by, I'm breaking out in sweat, makeup's running off of me because I'm outside in the heat trying to put this on so I don't walk into the convention wearing nothing. And I wound up going back out there and changing in my car like two hours into it. And then I just threw on some shorts and walked around the convention. Yeah. Yeah, if uh, if you're going to a convention and, and there's a hotel connected or like right across the street, yeah, always try and stay as close as you can. I know it might be a little bit more expensive, but in the end, it's going to be definitely worth it. Definitely worth it, especially if you do any kind of after-party stuff. Yeah, it's going to be worth it. And uh, we want, I want to move into the charity work because I've got you uh, about 30 minutes already, and I want to keep you all night. Uh, I'll have you ah. drunk before this is over. Keep this right, up. Right. I have nothing to do. I've got Survivor Series tonight, and that's about it. Uh, the charity work, much like uh, a real life superhero, you know, you use your powers of cosplay for for good. So tell us about some of the the charity work you do, and and you know how you give back. Well, um, so charity work is kind of what really got me started in the cosplaying. When I said, you know, that's what besides the Halloween costume, that's what really got me wanting to do more costumes and and into this world. So. Once I really got into this world and started doing conventions, I really wanted to stay true to that 
nature of what got me into it. So like at conventions uh, I go to, I, I give away prints of my costumes and me and autographs all for free. And I just do donations to various charities. So I try to pick a charity local to wherever I'm at. So if I'm in uh, Austin, Texas, I'll try and pick a charity that's local in Austin, Texas. But um, I work with Make-A-Wish a lot. And one reason why is because, one, they're a wonderful organization. But number two is there's chapters everywhere. Everywhere there's chapters. So if I can't find a local charity that I it's kind of reputable, I know Make-A-Wish is going to have a chapter near there. So I'm always I'm always supporting Make-A-Wish because they, they support me 100%. They're just wonderful. Um, so that's one thing I do. And then as far as the hospital visits, I still do those. I still do um, local like fundraisers or anything like that. If you contact me and I need to travel, I will, I will do that if I can um, for whatever event. Whether it's a school bullying, anti-bullying event, whether it's, like I said, just a fundraiser, whatever it is, I'll try and do it if I can. A birthday party, I don't care. I don't care. Um, what's coming up is, so every year for Christmas, I try and do a little bit more. And I try and, it's, it's Christmas time. I try and want to spread a little bit more cheer. So for the past couple of years, uh, me and another cosplayer, Supercase, she's a cosplayer based out of Indiana, uh, we team up, and we, we team up during the whole year, different duo costumes and stuff like that. But uh, we try to do something big for Christmas. So this year, what we're doing is we're doing a cosplay tour. We're starting at Youngstown, Ohio, and then we're moving to Cleveland, to Dayton, to Columbus, then Dayton, and then up to Indianapolis, ending in Indianapolis. And each city, we're visiting children's hospitals, we're visiting families, delivering presents to families in need whether it's food, toys, whatever they want. Um, we're stopping and randomly selecting uh, Toys R Us, uh, Walmarts, grocery stores to pay off people's groceries or layaways. And we're also visiting animal shelters, and we're donating uh, blankets, food, uh, toys to various animal shelters. So in order to raise money to help with this, we're starting a raffle. It's going to be an online raffle. You can visit my page, or you can visit Supercase's page. And there's going to be about 20 different prizes. And the prizes are ranging from props from fellow cosplayers to uh, uh, prints and autographs from celebrities to uh, gift prizes from comic book shops. And for a raffle ticket, $5 raffle ticket, you can you know, put your uh, name in the hat for whatever it is that you want to win. And then in the month of December, once we stop the raffle, once we start the tour... We'll be drawing the names of the winners. That's that's amazing, and um, of course, I'm going to put links in for all the information I'll get from you as soon as we stop recording for how people can find out how to you know do the charity thing. Um, are you accepting just donations from people? Because I've got random things. I've got a here. Book of the Dead, Necronomicon. Somebody might be into the Evil Dead. I could throw that in there. Absolutely, dude. If you, yeah, yeah. Actually, we are uh, we so we we had our quota at twenty donations from different various people, and I do believe we are at like seventeen. So, if you do have something that you would love to donate, absolutely, absolutely, message me and we'll we'll get that hooked up. And uh, again, I'm going to get that information. So anybody that's watching or listening, that will be at the end of this video, so you can get on there and make some donations and help support a good cause. And um, other than that, how can people see your work and connect with you if they want to reach out to, to Night Mage? Well, uh, on Facebook, you can find me at Night Mage. That's with a K. K-N-I-G-H-T-M-A-G-E. Or you can find my other profile, the Michael Night Mage Wilson. Again, I treat them both the same. So um, on Twitter, you can find me at Night Mage. And Instagram at Night Mage 1. And your Facebook is hilarious. You're sword fighting with little tiny lightsabers. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm just goofy. I just, I, I hope I can brighten someone's day. Well, I'm, sh I'm sure you do. <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm going to wrap this up and say thank you again. It's been an absolute pleasure actually getting to, to talk with you and 
put a personality behind all the stuff I see online. And uh, I hope that other people reach out and get in contact with you, support the charity work you do specifically, because it's always a, a wonderful thing to have people support a good cause. And um, do you have anything that you want to mention that I might have um, glanced over? Nothing, that's about it, you know. And for all the aspiring cosplayers out there, or even if you're not into cosplaying, if you ever just need, you know, a shoulder to talk to or anything like that, if you need advice on anything, you need help making anything, my message window is always open. And it says you respond within like one hour. That's what Facebook Messenger says. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, you know what? I'm I'm very big on that. I uh, even if it's even if I can't, you know, 100% talk to you right now, I want you to at least know that hey. I'm here. I'll, I'm going to try and get back to you, you know, as soon as I can. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you again for taking the time out of your night to uh, sit down with me and, and tell us a little bit more about yourself and all that. And it's, it's been a, it's been a really interesting conversation. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for having me. No problem. Just hang in there. I'm going to hit the stop record button and chat a little bit more. All right. My mouse isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to computers. Technology. Where's my mouse? It really doesn't want to work? This is why you just rip the cords out of the computer and just say, screw it. I would, but I'd lose the connection. And I'm oh. so leaving all this, this ignorance in. Hey, everybody. Body. Hey, everybody. Why do I keep saying my name? Hey, thanks for watching, but before you run off to make your own awesome cosplay armor and props, click that subscribe button down below so you'll always be updated when new videos are released. Also, if you need more tips, tricks, and tutorials, you can stop by www.ccosplay.com for much more information and articles that are released on a regular basis. And last but not least, stay crafty.